What is up guys, my name is Tyler, AK Recommend, and welcome to the week 3 pickums of the Mew Division for the VDL Season 2. No, this is Season 3 actually. <laughs> we are welcoming back at Cuddles. Thanks for having me back. Hopefully your voice is good this time. Yeah, um, we, hit, we hit a little bit of a snag last week. Um, my cyborg half was uh, poking out, so... Sorry about that. Your cyborg half. <laughs> Some people thought you were in space. Um, no, not in space. Just vibing out. <laughs> Your cyborg set. Okay, well, I'm happy to have you back in. Glad you enjoyed the last time. I did. I did. I like to see. Um, I see those matches went almost as predicted. Yeah, we got practically um, everything said. right except for like one or two. But I, I also like to be disproven too, so. Yeah, it also proves that maybe some of the advice that we gave to the people of how their opponents could beat them or yep. how they could beat their Proof. opponents could have worked in their favor. But are you ready to get started with our first matchup of week three? I am. Let's go. We got Starry versus Will. The boy. All right. So... You know, talking about this beforehand, we had a few different opinions, but I am sticking with my gut still. I'm still thinking Starry takes this one. Um, I mean, I, I understand Dragapult can he can take bring a substitute Dragapult set, but I think uh, I think just overall, I think uh, Starry definitely outmatches Will here. Um, Especially since Will got 6 0 last week, and that's going to be tough to come back from. The momentum's against him right now. Um, yeah, and I think he'll be scrambling, and I think, yeah, I think he'll be scrambling, and I think he might make an over aggressive attempt at something and reach too far. And I think it'll ultimately cost him in the end. Yeah, I'm going the other side. I still think maybe Will might be a little unconfident in this game, maybe scrambling trying to come back from that 6-0 loss but i do think he has a good matchup here the blazer can looks really good killer watcher looks solid i think crocodile can probably do some stuff here uh yeah dragon pope being the fastest thing on the board and can play around with substitute will on that meow scarada mm -hmm. i think he could do some stuff that for alligator with tara uh could probably dragon dance and do some significant damage here i think skarmy might be the only defensive wall to that I uh I think uh, Starry's pretty smart. Um, I think I think he'll come up with something to counteract that that tactic, whether it be like a Reaper a Reaper cloak. What is it? A Reaper's cloak? I'm not sure what that is. Um, hold on. Can you just click? One way to counteract it would be like an Iron Defense Body Press Skarmory. Yeah, but I'm talking about just with the uh, the Meowskarada. Oh, does it get something to counteract that? Yeah, yeah, give me one second. So I was thinking of a Covert Cloak, and I thought that prevented status effects, but I was wrong. It's oh. uh, They're not affected by secondary effect of another attack. Yeah. Yeah, it's not affected by okay. that kind of stuff. All right, well, I still think... Sorry, we'll come up with something. Um, like, I do see the potential of a Shell Smash Blastoise, Meowskarada, Spectria with Substitute could be good here. Gouging Fire with what Dragon What is Oricorio's Terras? I am not sure, and I don't have it up right now. Uh... So I can see Oricorio coming too as a D-Dance counter. It is Terra Flying Ground and Water. Okay, that's not helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's not very helpful. I think water might. No, be the I think I think the Blastoise. I think the Blastoise can go off, and I think the Meowskarada can still go off. Um, it can go off against Empoleon, Crocodile, Quacks, uh, Quaxwell for Alligator. It yeah. gets U-turn, so it can it can it can hit Shaman. Yeah, it finds uh, the right turn, then it could definitely like set up a Shadow Smash, start spamming Aura Sphere, Ice Beam. Mm -hmm. A water type move yeah I, I i i mean we can we can start this off with a with a contradiction of each other so i think starry takes it 3-0 all 
Okay, and I think Will takes it, maybe with a 2-0. I, I think, okay, okay. I think if Will wins, it's going to be close. But Starry's mm -hmm. more likely to win with a good differential, like a 4-0 or a 3-0. I just Fair. think he has more of the sweep ability. Okay, are you ready to move on? I am, I am. To our next game between that one guy and Cam Campbell. Uh, uh, that one guy actually disproved us last time. <laughs> he got the victory when he said he was going to lose. Yeah, uh, Terrapagos went off. Yeah, I had no idea that thing could do that. What? This is very interesting. Um, oh my god, Primarina. Yeah, the Primarina seems seems pretty, pretty all right here. But uh, again, I see Fezendipity who can take out that Primarino because it's part poison. Yeah, could have. Um, uh, Frostmoth has good special defense. Could run kick it. The Frostmoth has good special defense. I think. Um, I think the Swampert goes off here. That was a kind of solid. Yeah, the Viaplane might be the only counter. I've I think. Seen. I think the the yeah the Viaplume seems like the only counter really for it. Um, it's just it's, it has such a wide range for going up against this with um, ice punch and superpower and waterfall or I liquidation. Thinking, I was just thinking defensively, they're running surf, toxic, stealth mm. rocks. Just like yeah, staying on lots of these Pokemon here. It can that too, yeah. Um, Bring I think I think just, mm -hmm. and like Sandy shocks. Yeah, Sandy Shots can't hit it at all. And Typhlosion. Yeah, Swampert can just um, stay. I, I, I think the Swampert just is too good here to go against that one guy. Um, you mean go against Tom? That one guy I mean, yeah, go Swampert. against Tom. That's what I meant. Um, go against Tom. Too good to go. Yeah. Um, and he proved us with Terrapagos that Terrapagos is not to be trifled with, too, so... I'm eager to see that again. That is interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure how Tom wins this game. I think that one guy with the Swampert, Warring Moon, Frostmoth, those three just look very dangerous here. Mm -hmm. I think might be the best option, but that one guy probably has some of the best Zamazenta counters here. In the Swampert, Moltres, Ariyama. All looking very good. Yeah. Not really sure what it can do with those. I mean, even Treads is there, although that can get close combated. Yeah, Iron Treads could take Zamazenta, but it also can be taken by Zamazenta. So, um, it's kind of like a push scenario there. But the, as you said, Hariyama, Moltres, and Swampert really, really mess up Zamazenta's flow. Um, the only thing I'm worried about for that one guy is Gladius up against Fezendipity up against Roaring Moon um, in the sense that looks solid, but it kind of outspeed Roaring Moon with its scarf. It, it does get outspeed by Roaring Moon, but one one uh, good prediction and the Roaring Moon's gone, and then he doesn't really have much to take against Gladius or much to go against Latius. He's got a Wu-Chan. I mean, he's got a Wu-Chan, but no, I, I just think uh, Wu-Chan would, wouldn't last against Latius. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess, what's Wu-Chan's Terra's? Uh, it's got to be Poison. And, poison? Okay. Uh, poison Ghost. No, it's Dark. Dark Poison Water. Okay. Okay. Well, then, I mean, we're with the right Terra. Um, it could definitely last. But but if he brings Roaring Moon and Wo Chen, he only gets to bring six Pokemon. And if he's already planning with the defense against Samazenta and Primarina, then he's only got so many spots left. Yeah. I think that one guy is probably getting away with this win. Just has more I agree. availability to counter Tom's other Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You know? Like... The Primarina, I think, is their best Pokemon. Uh, Sincina might be the second best, but even that, mm -hmm. I see the counters to it and the treads. It could get low kick, but Sincina's got the 115 speeds here. Mm. 
which is super duper fast. So we could certainly do some stuff here. Uh, could also get burned up by like a flame buddy. Moltres, Ariyama could also right. be offensively against it. I think I think I think Tog just has the counters to this team. I agree. I think Tog does take it. Um, I think that Swampert's gonna go off. I think it might even get four kills. Um, yeah, even that Frost Moss down there. Those two just look really good here. Then bring in whatever other Pokemon they wanted to bring. Mm hmm. I I think Tog takes it. I think he takes it four zero. I don't think I would go that far. Um, you don't think so? I, I see some potential. I, I think I think I think his Pokemon will get weak, but I think he can get it 4-0. I, I see some potential, but like Vile Plume, Typhlosion, Hisuian, Sincina, Primarina, Dumbazenta, and some sixth Pokemon to do reasonably good work around here. Um, mm -hmm. I'd probably say a 3 -0, maybe a 2 -0 if he's lucky. But likely a 3-0. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, we'll see when they get their match planned out and taken care of. We will indeed. Let's get on to our next game between Froze Bros and King Dozo, who both lost last week. Oh, no, Froze Bro, won with the Yeah, with the I'm sorry, yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And did. I think, you know, straight up, I think Froze has such a good team so solid um there's really like his first eight first not first ten even his first no oh, it's first nine his first nine pokemon are just so good and the way it can interchange with any of them and still be a solid team um says a lot about the way he drafted yeah i've really now seen the power of the river room <laughs> yeah, it, you get a shift gear off and can avoid a ground attack. It's a, uh, it's not to be trifled with. I think one problem here is that Vaporeon is gonna have to choose whether it wants to be physically defensive or specially defensive, whether it wants to mm. be for Champ Out or Walking Wake, mm. because it can't take a Draco and a Crunch. Right. So it's gonna have to pick and choose. I don't know what it's going to choose. It might choose more physically defensive, just so Krogonon will be the special defensive one. Um, like it tried to do against the Iron Bundle in the last mm -hmm. week's game. That could be positive. But just walking away and Chambao go absolutely insane here. I mean, those two. Yeah, um, I don't really like King Dozo's fairy matchup in this scenario because Comfy's just specially defensive. And Rev of Room is physically attacking. Um, I get he still has a Steel type and another Poison type, but if he's able to get a Shift Gear, if he's able to get a Shift Gear off, it's going to be tough to come back from that one without a Ground type other than Ting Lu. I mean, Ting Lu is a great Ground type. He's Ting Lu is a great Ground type, but that Rev of Room Terra Waters and. I think it's just tough. I, I he's got to he's got to bring. I think Sinus just coming with strengths up. Yeah, I'm, but at that point, it'll probably already be shift geared and would be able to take out Sinestra. Sinestra. I think at least now King Dozo knows that Riverrun can run this shift gear set mm -hmm, sure. in that first week, so he's gonna have a much better ability to try to prep for it than Pros' last week opponent will. Who might have not known about the set, or might have not been expecting it. Um, I still think Froze has the better matchup. Champa walking away just going insane. Ooh, it's actually so defensive. Scary. I was reading it wrong. I take that back. I look stupid. Um, it's <laughs> actually defensive. I don't know what I was looking at. That Teddy looks stupid. I think this might be a close <laughs> battle. As long as the Reverie don't go crazy again. I think it could be very close. Um, that Terra Water Rev Room is it's just scary. It is. It really is. Um, I think I think defensive Vaporeon might be a good counter to it though. Uh, if it's got Scald and it can wish protect and try to burn yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe even bring Haze if it learns it. I'm not sure, but if it does. That'd be good. I believe it does. 
If it doesn't, then Cryogonal does, and Cryogonal's a tower gap, man. Yeah, and Haze, yeah, it does take Haze. But okay. Cryogonal is base faster, too, so... Yeah, so that could also... I guess it wouldn't matter if he shift geared, you know? <laughs> I think this could be a very close game if the Ndidi can help out the Sneezer in the right moment. Uh, and I think King Dozo has the right defensive core with Cormonite, uh, Tinglu, and Vaporeon to be able to counter these offensive threats. I think it's going to be close. So who are you going to go with? Uh, I'll go with Bro just because of how dominant the last game was, and he does mm -hmm. got those great Pokemon here. In terms of walking away, Whimsicott, and probably in the back somewhere. I, I think he's got the right offensive here. And mm -hmm. not very sure if King Dozo can work these defenses. Not a hundred percent sure. What are you going with? I think Froze. Um, I think Froze takes it at least two, if not three. Oh, um, I I think the offense outweighs the defense here, and I think that's ultimately what wins it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting game to watch gonna be interesting you ready to move on i am let's go to Rampardos versus tam the gray electric terrain versus rain <laughs> yeah i believe this is gonna be the match of the week Ooh. the match of the week the match of the week here I do like all the the synergies of both teams, but I think the synergy of Tam's team is just a bit more with its Swift Swimmers and Archaladon, Raging Bolt. Um, I like the Hattering there. I like the Carbink. I think uh, this is gonna be a wild game. That's what I think. It is, and then on top of that, he's the Lantern. Also, with the Pinkurchin on the other side, the Lantern can really uh, can really take advantage of both terrains, or both the weather and the terrain. Yeah, I think Tam's winning this. Yeah? I think his team what, just, what are you... I think his team just... It's so much offense, and Rampardos is also so much defense. But then you look at the defense here, and Toxpace and Glyscal can't really beat the Hattery. Mm-hmm. They just can't. So the Earthworm is gonna have to come. I think Bramble Gas is coming so we can go against Barrascuta. Uh, so it doesn't like the offenses. But even Barrascuta come on like Crunch and the Palapa can come and hit a Hurricane. I think it's just... Mm -hmm. It's got... Ow. I mean, even Rage and Bolt can use the Electric Terrain to its advantage and hit Thunderbolts. Yeah. Thunderclaps and whatever. You know? I think it just... How do you like the Iron Valiance matchup, though? The Iron Valley is probably the best offense that Rampardos has here. I think it looks very good. It could probably spam a bunch of close combats. Although Overquill could come in. Uh, hit an Intimidate on it. If it is mm -hmm. physical. But that means it would be wasting the uh, Swiss one. Wouldn't be able to use that. Right. But that's what the versatility is for. For Overquill. In that scenario. You can bring it in as a Swiss Swimmer. Or you can bring it in as an Intimidator to... Help the rest of your team out. Yeah. Even the Carbink there could be a good Iron Valiant counter. Carbink, he looked pretty solid here. Bam, Moonblast. I do. I dogs. agree. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty solid. Not to mention the Arch Archaladon. <laughs> yeah, the Archaladon. Uh, Archaladon. However yeah. it's pronounced. Yeah, this um, is pretty good. Also, Scissor with Bullet good Punch the, can be good against Iron Boulder. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. I just think, yeah, damn, has... The better matchup here. I agree, but what do you think the score will be? Um, I think it's gonna be a long game. I think it's gonna be a. Long oh game. yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a long game. Might go a two zero, and mm. maybe a three zero if he can bring out the offenses early. But with the Hattering and the Toxpest Glide score, no, that's tool game. Uh, Cyclozor. I don't even think Cyclozor's got shit to tell here. Actually, no, that's what I thought. That seems mainly gonna be a regenerator. Yeah, not to mention that head flotion just straight up can't come. Correct. So just go. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a long game. Probably a 2 go to Tam. If Ramp wins, he's gonna have to fight with his life. It's gonna be a 1 0. 
I think I like Tam's team and I like Ramp's team, but I give the edge to Tam a little more than what you were saying for him. I give it just a little bit more. Um, but that Iron Valiant can go off and has gone off and will still go off sometime in the future. Yeah, it definitely. Uh, and and that's that's the only thing keeping this really as close as we want it. And that's why I still think it's the match of the week. Uh, but I agree. I think Tam's going to take it either one or two zero. Um, and I think it'll I think it'll be an average length match though, like twenty five turns or so. Interesting. Yeah, this is going to be a match of them. I'm going to be looking out for. Are right, you ready to move on? Ready, ready. Okay, next so we have Toad and Ursul. Toad and Ursul. I believe they might have actually... If I'm getting this right now, they both lost. <laughs> In week one. I mean, they both two. lost. Oh, week two. Um, I believe... Do not uh, scream at me if I'm wrong. I know Toad lost. Not quite sure about Ursul, but I think they did. Mm -hmm. I think this is an interesting... Interesting matchup. Let's see here. What was the regulations for choosing your Terra? Was there only a certain tier up or a certain certain uh, level of tiers you can go up? Yeah, like you can only I do ten, it, tier 10 and lower? 10 and below, yeah. 10 and below, okay. I just want to make sure because uh, Iron Moth, not Terra, is is what's concerning me here because that Doug trio can and will hurt it. Yeah, it's kind of low. Okay. Um, it seems like a pretty even matchup here. Uh, I agree. It's they both got some good hitters. They they both got some bulk. They both got some utility. That enamorous um, looks crazy. Yes, the enamorous looks crazy. And so does the... How does the tentacruel? <laughs> the tentacruel. Oh my god. Why does the tentacruel look crazy? Uh, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave. Giga Drain, that's... Skull. Yeah. It's got, it's got the uh, wide range of moves. Yeah, and got the one T-Spike witching is the Iron Moth, which does not want to take a Skull. Correct. So I think they well, King Gambit is also a switch in but it doesn't get rid of them yeah even to serena gets uh the rap it's gonna get rid of them but it also, it also doesn't want to switch into a sludge bomb yes i think that tentacle and then enamorous look really good here uh i think zapdos galera looks really good against arson mm, i think the one that stands out most from Toad's side is probably the Serena. The Serena? Yes. Why is it Serena? If I'm remembering correctly. Okay, never mind. It doesn't get it. <laughs> so, never mind. Um, I was thinking of something else. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just thought, like, just, just Serena. What? It kind of gets. Yeah, I was thinking of like, another one. Anamorous and Infernape, Yaminga. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a tough. It's it's tough because they both have answers for each other. But what's really coming down to it is an answer for the hazards and the sacrifices that are going to have to be made on Toad's side to get either to a get rid of them or b don't get rid of them. Like I think he's more going to be either to set his own up with Samurai and Faceless Edge. Right, but the having only Iron Moth as a toxic or a poison type to get rid of the toxic spikes, and then the rapid spin, it, it, it seems like there's going to be a lot of heavy do heavy duty boots being ran on Toad's side, and yeah, unless his yes, plan is to Terra Quagsign to Terra Poison early, mm -hmm. and then use that as the switch him because Terra Poison Quagsign doesn't look terrible here. It doesn't. Um, the only thing I would be worried about is still that Doug Trio. 
is still faster than all of his Pokemon. Uh, yeah, that is something and it does well about. against it does well against a good majority of them. The Iron Moth, the King Gambit, of uh, the Terra Quagsire, the Knackle Stack, the Charge Bug. Or does does the bug typing make it neutral since it's bug electric? It the Charger Bug pure bug, I think. Oh, it is pure bug? Okay. I believe so. Charge a bug. What do I not No, it's bug electric. Oh, okay. So yeah, it it's is neutral. bug electric. Neutral then. I think I would give a slight edge to Arsel on this. I agree. I think that. Oh, excuse me. The Doug Trio and Tentacruel, um, really, kind of gauge what Toad does and what Toad can switch into and how he switches, um, and then just the speed tiers. He's got six Pokemon. It's, Urzel's got six Pokemon over a hundred, whereas Toad's only got two, and yeah. I think that could be a definite downfall. Yeah, I think Toad's best Pokemon here are Zapdos, Galarian, and the Quagsire with a potential Terra Poison. But yeah, Urzel does look like he is the better matchup here. Um, with a Namorous Tentacle, Dugtrio, mm -hmm. even the Greninja looking pretty solid. Um, Garachi has probably got to come. Even oh yeah, to a lot of the Pokemon actually. We got the Samurai, the King Gambit, the Iron Moth, the Quagsire, and the Sableye down there. Rachi has a tough time, but it kinda has got to bring as a Sylveon counter. Yep. I mean, the Tentacruel can handle the Sylveon too, but if if not checked, that Sylveon can definitely pop off against the rest of his team. I think we're both going to Tarasul. I'm gonna say uh, yeah. I'm gonna give it to Ursul. I'm saying it's gonna be a close one. I think it'll be a two-o. A two-o. But both of his Pokemon are around half. I'm saying Ursul went in with a full row. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, it's... I think he just got the better matchup here. I think Toad might try to stall him out a little bit and try to scare mm -hmm. him with some stuff. You know, but. I think overall Ursula is going to make the good switch outs and play the tentacle on the Dojo right and for the win. Nice. Okay. You ready to go forward? The last game, I think it is. I am. It's between our good friends. What the heck is Okay. All right, all right, all right. The good. I see C Prime's made a change with the Alolan Sandslash and the Landorus. So. Yeah. That definitely beefs up his team. He also picked up in the that offensive stance. Oh, and he's Pokemon. else. Okay, okay. I don't remember a yeah. lot of his team then. Yeah, I don't remember what he traded I remember for those three, but. <laughs> I, re I remember that Alolan Ninetales, the Kyurem, and the Golden Go, and the Jolteon. That's what I remember. <laughs> I remember the Volibee and the Aridos, though, but. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of. What was uh, yeah, I take that back. I do remember the Ariados. Because yeah, he's got the, the sticky. Oh, yeah. Sticky. <clears throat> the icky stickies. Let's, uh... <sighs> I, I want to see what he used to have. Here we go. Oh, he had the Ursula and the Blood Moon. Oh, uh, right. And the mm. Oak and the Incineroar. Okay. Yeah, it makes me some good, too. I think the new Quack rule looks pretty solid here, actually. I do. I uh, I do agree. I do agree. Um, I think it can be a check to Annihilate if it runs the bulk up set. Yeah, it can do pretty solid here. Close combat, Aqua Step. Although I don't think it out speed rated like you have to want Aqua Step. Yep, it does not. That is correct. Well and it can't really still be accounted to Colossal after it terrors. That's something to be wary of. Even Deoxys defense could probably counter it well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the Landorus. Landorus seems like it'll do well here um, against some of his defense with uh, Deoxys and Gudra and Salazzle. Um, it could potentially. I would suggest it to run Rock Slide or some sort of Rock Timer for that Braviary, just in case. Mm -hmm. Although the Braviary is likely to bring, I don't think, just because the Jolteon Kyurem with all the Ninetales. Braviary can't really hit the Golden Go well. 
there. Maybe you don't need rock move. Maybe not. I really think that for for C Prime to win this, he's got to lower that. Yeah, you know, continually lower that Reggie Lucky speed so he can get it checked, so he can try to run it with a Quaquavel, because that Reggie Lucky is gonna take out with that Quaquavel quick. Um, you think Webs is coming? I think Webs is coming. I think Snow is coming just to help bolster the defense. I think what I think his team, uh, C Prime's team, is gonna be is Alola Nine Tails. Kyurem, Ariados, Landorus, Golden Go, and then Jolteon. Interesting. Interesting. I think the Jolteon will be the check for Iron Bundle. It had to be Scarf then. I it would, it would I mean. be Scarf, but yeah. I'm really worried about that. Iron Bundle Iron loves bundle. that snow. Yeah. Okay, but gonna... why, why draft the snow and not use it? No, I mean, Bundle just for love being inside the snow have a little night right dance. again the defense boost against some of these more special attackers like landers and kiram kiram's a physical attacker i believe it's it can run both it learns dragon dance but also runs like break a meteor and ice beam so mm, i always ran it with like scale shot and iron head this dragon means. claw dragon dance stuff like that Man, um what, what, what are your thoughts what do you think what do you think is gonna happen i i think what's is gonna win this you think so yeah i think he I has the ability to get this w i think annihilate has very limited counters i think the golden go is probably the best counter that c prime has that annihilate i don't think golden go does great here with the colossal the torterra Indra mm -hmm. has can just switch on it every single day of the year. Yeah. You know, having the Zorak down there could disguise as something. I don't think that Golden Go is a great. And Vortex though. is good at the disguising. Indeed, he is. He could disguise that thing as something mm -hmm. very, very spicy. You know. Um, I think Iron Bundle doesn't have the best matchup than it does in previous weeks and will do in the future. I think maybe this is one of the better teams going against the bundle because of the Veil yeah. and the Kiram. And even the Jolteon that outspeeds it could run Scarf, even Quick Feet maybe with Flame Orb. Well, Jolteon doesn't technically outspeed it. Oh, it doesn't. I thought it did. Damn. So yeah, maybe maybe the Flame Orb set with uh, Quick Feet could be the play there. Mm -hmm. Although it would be messing up on not running Volt Observer the Regilecki. But I was thinking Voltex just has the incredible defenses here. Tiaxis mm -hmm. defense goes absolutely wild. Colossal has good defense. Yeah, it does. Gujo Hasui could run Assault Burst, it just overall has good special defense. Uh, Torterra. There are a lot right of moment. special attacks. Bro, Torterra in the right moment just oh, sweeps yeah. this whole team. Like, you get that Kiram down. And Torterra goes insane. I believe. Hold on. Uh, it did. Yeah, it can get Rock Slide too, so. It also gets Rock Blast. And, s yeah. Yeah, it could break down that. Um, I would be interested in what Sportex's thing was to get rid of the Veil. Um, mm -hmm. Since I think Bravey was the only defogger here. I think. Not 100% sure, but I believe. Well, Annihilate does get Brick Break. Oh, that is true. I don't think either Braver or an Eyelet want to switch in on the Nine does. Correct. But I don't think Nine Tails will stay in there for the entirety of the Veil. Yeah. So. Yeah. I I think it's interesting. I would give the edge to Vortex because I see the Annihilate and I see the defensive cause and I see the Zorak I ability. <laughs> But also, C Prime has a solid matchup. I mean, C Prime's a wild card. Kiram, yeah, he's a bit of a wild card here with this weird ass team that he's got going on. Mm -hmm. You know, Kukwavo could probably do some stuff. Jolteon could do some stuff. Kiram's an interesting Pokemon. You know, if that thing gets a Dragon Dance up, then shit could go wild. Yeah. You know? I, I think it's. It could be a close one on the paper. 
but I think because we know Vortex. I think I think it's further apart on paper. I think it's closer in action because these two mm -hmm. these two guys have battled so many times against each other, and I think they both know what each other's gonna bring, and so they're gonna try to prep for that, and it's gonna change, and they're gonna realize it. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild a wild goose chase of trying to set up their teams to prepare for each other, preparing for each other. Um, just because they have that experience. And so it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a wild match. This, these week three matchups, there's, there's some, there's some good ones this week and, uh, I'm excited to see how they all play out. But Indeed. again, on paper, I'm going to give it to Vortex. Um, Yay. It's gonna but get again, at the same time, C prime knows how Vortex is prepped. So uh, I think C Prime pre uh, knows how he preps just a little bit more than Vortex knows how C Prime preps because Vortex did the prepping for C Prime. So uh, I give that advantage to C Prime in action, and it's gonna be probably a two-zero either way. I kind of agree with that. I think either way, yeah, it might be, might be a two-zero. I think it's gonna be a close one, either person winning. Mhm. Mm yeah. Is that all you got to say? That's all I got. Okay, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed your week three pickums. If you want us to see more of Cuddles, make sure you smash that like button. Maybe he'll return again. You know. Or, or reach out to your local mods and owners and say, hey, get this guy in here. Let's see what he has to say to our faces. Whoa. Okay, well, I uh, wish you guys all good luck in your matches, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.